Kingdom Under Fire starts out simple enough. You play as Geralt, the captain of the Hironidan army, as a war is declared against the Heck army. You spend the first few missions killing anyone that comes across your path and fighting the good fight. Orcs, Dark Elves, Trolls, few stand a chance against you. Things take a grim turn however, after you get your butt kicked by Rainier, the big bad of the game, forcing you to retreat to the safety of the capital and lick your wounds. This war was originally meant to be quite short and glorious, though it has become clear that the humans are far outmatched and decide to plead with the dwarves and elves to lend their assistance, with Gerald's friend, Rupert, volunteering to deliver the message. Unfortunately, months pass by with no contact from the outside world, and with the enemy gathering at the gates. Whilst carrying out an inspection of the defences, the Heck army finally spring their attack. This is also where we're introduced to a new undead soldier class that require much more of a beating to defeat, with the healing spells of the paladins being your greatest asset. You manage to dispatch them, though they are then followed by more, then more, then even more. Just when you think you might be gaining control of the situation, things get worse. Soon you're completely overwhelmed and find yourself desperately running back and forth trying to defend the inner wall all by yourself. While the vastness of the army is certainly imposing, the size of the level itself is what really makes this level work. It's not as if you're defending a narrow corridor where the enemy forces are all cramped into one place. You have to carefully decide who to attack whilst keeping in mind that it can take a while to reach the other side of the map. This may force you to do some rather risky manoeuvres like making your sapper division, whose job it is to set or dismantle traps, get into fights with zombies or giant scorpions in a desperate attempt to just slow the enemy forces down a little. Not to mention that whilst all this is going on, you have to actually kill the enemies yourself. Things become so overbearing that you may think this is a mere unwinnable battle for the sake of the story, like what is filmed in Jedi Outcast, though that isn't the case at all. As like with any other level, you can die, which has more of a consequence than we're maybe used to in current games. Kingdom Under Fire has no checkpoints and no options to save in mid-battle. The only time you can save your progress is after each mission, meaning that if you die, you have to start all the way back at the beginning. Keep in mind that levels in this game can last up to 30 minutes, some even going for as long as an hour, so as if chasing enemies all over the map to stop this invasion wasn't tense enough, the price of failure makes it even more so. While there may be pockets of humanity scattered throughout the world, the majority now live within the walls of the capital, and their only line of defence is Gerald and his troops. There's no timer telling you when the level is ending, only the inner wall's health bar, which you can only watch as it gets lower and lower. The feeling of desperation as you play is palpable. After a certain amount of time, Gerald and his troops are near the point of exhaustion. Don't let them win! This can't be the end. I won't let it be the end. Haranadin must live on. Gerald! I told you I'd be back! Dwarves and elves! Come at them! Not since Lord of the Rings have reinforcements been such a welcome sight. While this game is far from perfect, I feel that it doesn't quite get the love that it deserves. With the recent announcement of Halo Wars 2, it has brought about questions as to whether there's ever been, or ever will be, a good RTS game on the consoles, and in all the conversations that I've heard, this game has never had a mention, which I feel is quite a shame. Sure, there is a sequel supposedly coming out soon, and I do hope it's good, but it looks a little too Dynasty Warriors for my liking. So for now, Kingdom Under Fire The Crusaders is only available on the original Xbox, so it might be a hassle to play it, though if you do get the chance you definitely should. 